So we have this awesome new housing from Open Boards. It's like so smooth it doesn't even feel 3D printed. Maybe it's not, I don't know. And then uh, we have the GoPro mount as well. And they gave me the correct connector now, so it'll actually fit where it's supposed to. That is awesome. So I'm going to take this apart now and put it into the new housing. It's so awesome. It is 3D printed, but like it's really well done. Uh, yeah, it already has all the heat inserts already in it, so it makes it really easy to assemble. That is so awesome. It's going to be great. Here's the phone. Here's the old with the circuit board in it, and I just installed the fan into the new case. So next step, boom. And there it is, the new housing. I could have put this on. It looks kind of cool, but I also think it looks cool to see all the electronics. So I'm gonna keep it off for now. Maybe I'll add it on in the future. But yeah, just like that, we have a new housing thanks to open boards. All right, so we're back in the car. We have the new mount installed. And uh, Kame I just came out with the 0.3.5 update. And oh my gosh, it is so smooth. It's hard to tell. It used to have this issue where it kind of ping-ponged in the lane before a little bit in 0.3.3. .3, but now in the new version, you get none of that on straightaways. Like, it just goes completely straight. And uh, yeah, the calibration is a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurate. Just overall, a bunch of new things happen. But yeah, like, heading back to Maine here from Vermont, I barely have to touch the wheel. Like, I only think I'm gonna have to touch it when this bar hits the six minute mark, but I mean, other than that, this thing is so smooth. So yeah, the wheel is turning itself, and as you can see, my feet are just chilling. And it takes hills a lot better, too. I remember in episode two, I talked about how it would kind of ping pong when you're going down a hill. Uh, that was related to the same thing. Oh no, I'm gonna be stuck behind this guy. That's another thing about this update though, lane changes are so much smoother now. I'm making another lane change. It glides right into the lane just like that. So awesome. Something I forgot to show last time was the UI down here. So it actually uses the existing Honda Sensing UI uh, to display that there's a car in front and the speed I have set. Yeah. So that's awesome. You can just kind of take a quick glance down there to see what's going on. but. Yeah, we're traveling back to Vermont from Maine, and I also have the Panda with me. So I'm gonna be doing some videos on the Panda in the future. Since my first episode, torque limit on the Civic increased by 6%, and that's something I didn't even know in the last episode. So it's been taking turns a lot better. Uh, yeah, there's just certain turns near my area that it couldn't do at all, but now it can do just fine. So, I mean, honestly, this is freaking awesome. I love this so much. Calibration was a breeze. You can actually reset calibration now in the UI uh, if your calibration gets screwed up, which mine did uh, between episodes. But I mean, yeah, just just look at this. Like this is a pretty steep turn, and it's it's just doing great. It's a new take control message, as you can see. Special thanks to Open Boards for sending me this awesome case. I mean, it really is high quality. You can't even see the 3D printed layers in this case, like they kind of polish it up real nice and it, it fits very snugly. There's no warping at all at the top, it's all completely perfect. And uh, they sent me this new cord which actually fits right in, which is something very well needed. Uh, it looks a lot better. Right now I just have it out because I've been having some issues with, you know, getting it out once you have it in and I wanted to charge uh, the phone while it wasn't in the car. So right now I have it kind of sticking out, but you can just put it in and it goes completely flush. Be sure to check out Open Boards, link in the description. That's where I buy all my Kama Neo stuff. All right, so my friend Riley is in the Civic behind me and we're gonna do that classic thing that some people do in Tesla autopilot videos where the car uh, is tracking the person so you can just kind of back up and the car follows you. So hit it. Okay, so the car's now stopped. Uh, it has its radar on me, so I should theoretically be able to walk and it should go. And stop, just like that. So, I mean, theoretically, you know, it's pretty fun. 
I mean, I mean that's awesome right there. Self-driving technology is freaking awesome. I'm now going to show how OpenPilot performs on definitely not the best case scenario at all. Uh, so this is a road that has no lane markings at all. And yeah, it's working pretty well. It uses kind of like where the road meets the grass to figure this out. And up here we're going to be taking a turn. I actually have uh, my friend getting an external shot so you'll be, you'll be able to see that. So yeah, here we are. We're up, up approaching this turn here. And Open Pilot is going to see it and rotate the steering wheel just like that. Boom. Kind of oversteers here because it doesn't know what the heck's going on. Uh, but still a fairly good test considering how terrible this road is. Alright, so we're tracing this guy here, and I, I think this helps Open Pilot in situations where it doesn't know what's on the road. It seems to be doing better, right? So, I, it's a theory, but I think when there's no lane markings, it sometimes uses the follow car to do extra calculations. So, I mean, that was a lot better than when there was no car in front of me. This probably isn't an ideal place to be with open pilot. I mean, it's really meant for highways right now, and uh, the model's constantly improving, though, so I'm sure areas like this will work better in the future. Uh, but yeah, for now, um, I mean, it works. You'll, you know, you'll want to stay a little more alert than you would have to be on a highway. That's, you know, there's just no lane markings. I mean, we need, we need the lane markings, you know. So I'm at a stoplight, and you see, you can't see the stoplight here, but actually, if you look at the footage that the Neo uploads, the stoplight is there. So that was a concern I had for the future of Open Pilot when you know he said he's going to add stoplights and stuff. But it turns out the camera has a bigger field of view than this particular view shows so that's a thumbs up there yeah the, the problem isn't with open pilot here the problem is with <laughs> everybody around you yeah all right but hey i mean now that we have a follow car so we're not speeding through the city it's working pretty well and, you know one issue with cities is the lane markings aren't the best so like this will improve with future software updates i'm sure you know, once it starts identifying the curb more uh, as like a, a barrier, and then once Open Pilot starts seeing a line of parked cars, not as like a separate lane, but as like a barrier as well. So, you know, that's all stuff that's gonna come in the near future, I'm hoping. But I mean, it's, you know, it's still nice even if you just use it for um, cruise control and then like make sure the steering is perfect. But I mean, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance. It's probably not up there with autopilot in this certain use case, but I don't think even autopilot would do this road anyway. Um, it's too many factors going on in the city. You know, you have people walking around, you have, it's just, it's a mess. <laughs> Open pilot doesn't yet see pedestrians or anything as separate entities. So like, you know, you, you gotta pay attention when you're in the city for sure. To conclude this episode, I was very impressed with Open Pilot's performance in non-ideal conditions. Uh, it did better than I was expecting. And the constant software updates are making me a very happy comma AI customer. There's been a lot of improvements since my previous episode and dramatic difference between the first and second episode with the UI in particular. As long as no major software updates come out between now and next episode, the next episode will be solely based on being a Honda Sensing comparison video. So I'm going to have Open Pilot do certain roads and then Honda Sensing and we will show the comparison. I think it's pretty obvious what system is going to perform better, but that'll kind of help people who have Honda Civics already with Honda Sensing see how much better that the system can be. With that being said, thank you all for watching episode 3. If you want to see Open Pilot in more ideal conditions, check out episode 2. And if you want to see me building the Neo from start to finish, check out episode 1. See you in the next video. Bye!